Ferguson. Ferguson loved to sleep on the tape machines when they were warm. He'd walk across a line of machines while they were playing. He'd carefully step from one to the next as the tape reels were turning around. He was a pro. Fergie loved to sleep on the mixing console too. When you're working, setting EQs and pans and moving faders, you tend to lean over the console. And that's when Fergie would hop up, come walking along the edge of the console, arch his back, and rub it under your chin. This was followed by his tail, the full length of it rubbing against the bottom of your nose as he continued on by. Sometimes he'd stop, decide it was nap time, lay down on the mixing board. And you'd say, come on, Fergie, quit it, and pick him up and set him on the floor. We knew he was just looking for attention or affection, so we figured out ways to work with him and around him. Then one night, a skunk got him. He'd never had a run-in with a skunk before, but oh God, did he stink. We poured tomato juice all over him and let him soak for an hour. He got stiff as plywood and then Fulton put Fergie in the shower, climbed in with him, soaped him up and turned on the water. Fergie didn't struggle. He stood there perfectly still, but he kept up a low, constant growl all through his shower. We didn't realize a cat could cuss like that. The tomato juice helped, but on damp days when you were in the studio mixing and Fergie would hop up on the console, arch his back and run his tail under your nose, oh God, there was that ghost of that skunk. ZBS had an artist in resident program. It ran for eight years. Filmmakers, video artists, composers, poets, and performance artists would spend a week here working on sound for their projects. Terry Fox was working on a piece entitled The Labyrinth Scored for the Purrs of Eleven Different Cats. It was based on the labyrinth in the Cathedral of Chartres. Its 70 minute sound installation composed so that each of the labyrinth's concentric rings is represented by a cat's purr. At the center, all 11 cats are heard purring in chorus. As the deep reassuring rumble suggests, Fox viewed the labyrinth as a means of self discovery. When Terry Fox came here, he had already recorded two cats purring, but he needed nine more. We had four cats living here. There was one next door in the main house. He had a wheezy, raspy, punkish purr. He was a bully. He used to come over to the studio and eat up Fergie's food. In the loft, there was Berber, Fulton and Gale's cat. He was a Persian with a soft, sweet purr. And above the studio where Richard and Charlotte lived was Heba, a Siamese. And below, living in the studio was, of course, Fergie. So we went around knocking on neighbors' doors, asking if we could audition their cats for possible purrs, and trying to explain why wasn't easy. By the way, if you Google Terry Fox Labyrinth, you can hear some of this piece. Fergie's in there too, somewhere. Months later, Fulton decided to listen to Labyrinth scored for the purrs of 11 different cats. Fergie was napping on the mixing console, sleeping through the low purrs, rumbling out of the big studio speakers, and suddenly Fergie was awake. He sat up, growling and hissing, and he arched his back with his hairs standing straight up, and Fulton then realized coming out of the speakers at that moment were the wheezy, raspy purrs of that punk from the main house. Out of the eleven cats purring, Fergie heard his next-door nemesis and had a fit. Fergie was pissed. 